can see here we have parts of the signal which are high frequency, so it goes out of range because of the, the way the interpolation is calculated. Yes. So we can just put the low pass on. Low pass filter. Low pass filter. This will clean up a lot of the high yes. transients, so now yes. you get a much cleaner waveform. Yes, I can see. And we have another which isn't working yet, no interpolation, we'll just give you the digital values. Yes. So there will be no joining up the lines, it'll be just all digital yes. stepping of yes. the signal. Can you show me? I can't, it doesn't work. Ah. It's this beta software at the moment, so yeah. the next version yes. definitely will work. If I turn it off, it just you get nothing. Yes. So I need to say back to low pass. So we're looking at this very small part of the picture down here. Yes. So if I was to move that up to here, for example, you can see the quality of the waveform is very, very good. So let me see if I can generate audio. Um, generate. So now I've got information about my different groups of audio, and yeah. if I go back to my audio view, you can see I've got audio tone generation going on there, yeah. so that's perfect. Um, so we looked at status, we also have physical layer status, so you can look at the different frequency responses. Yes. Uh, sorry, different um, jitter values for different frequencies. Rise time, fall time, etc. Yes. And then going through to the pixel data, cable view. So you can look at the data on the cable coming in. Yes. So you look at your sample, your line number. Yes. And if I move this around, this will obviously change. So I'm looking at sample 620 on line 232. Yes. And that's the data associated with it. Yes. But if I want to uh, export the, these uh, data, um, it's marked into. Um, it's, it's not. There's not a log as such. No, yeah. um, you, you don't get a log. Yeah. No. But you could always do a save the screenshot if you wanted to save um, information. Yes. 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 So that'd be the way to save it. If you had a, a, a something you wanted to show somebody, you can say save. Yes. Yes. <coughs> um, also, going down looking at pixel data, you've got data view, so you can look at the actual data. Yes. Uh, and. Also very useful is the fact you can look at um, the actual waveform. So yes. you have a waveform of the actual sample and line you're looking at. So yes. it's, it's a very simple view, but it's quite useful from an engineering point of view. Yes. Ancillary data, we look at the ancillary watch. This is a copy of that. So this shows you the ancillary data packets present. So they're green, they're good. If they go orange, they're in error. Yes. And also we look at ancillary counts. So we're looking at ancillary data errors. So we've got to, yes, yes. You can see we've got some um, the counts are going on here, but zero errors. So that's that's all good. Everything's good. Yes. And you can look at the different sets. But have the error they will ch change the colon to it's red. red. Exactly. Yes. Exactly right. Yes. <laughs> and we go through different groups of these, which correspond to what's over here. So that's the uh, ancillary, and then we've got Ank Viewer. So your Ank Viewer will allow you to look at ancillary data packets. We can look at that. Yes, there we are. So it gives you the Ank Viewer for this uh, SIMT352. Just gives you the CRC errors, count. And then all the uh, different yeah. values for channel one, two, three, and four. Yes. To be honest, I'm not an engineer, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what that means. But from an engineer, yes, it does yes. allow you to get to that level of detail. Yes. If I look at the audio as well, the so audio group two is telling you the information what's going on in yes. audio group two. Right. Um, 
So moving down to the um, physical layer. <coughs> so we have an eye diagram. Yes. We have jitometers. Yes. So you can see the jitometers there. <coughs> for the different uh, frequencies. You've also got jitter spectrum. Yes. So, you, so you can look at the spectrum of jitter. Yes. Uh, it's non-real time, so it has to calculate. It does a fast Fourier transform. Yes. So, so that means we have uh, four split uh, screens, so we can choose. You can have more. Uh, with the new version of software, you can have up to this. So we have this is version two software. Yes. We're running version three software here, and we have more combinations of screens. Um, so, so we can output to the big screen to to yes, more. exactly. Yes. Okay. And actually, here, if I wanted a full screen of this, I can go like that, and it'll make the screen full yeah. screen. So you can do that, but you have only quad split at the moment. But that will change. So I can also put on my physical, I can put my histogram. Histogram, yeah. So now you can see it's actually calculated the, um, the jitter spectrum. So if I look at my here and I turn on log frequency, you can actually increase the, it just changes the actual scaling. Yes. And so you can see the actual all the points of jitter that it's calculated. And this is just a histogram here of the, um, of the, the jitter. And it's, yes. That's typically normal of how you'd see it. If yes. you had artifacts, you may see a dis disformation in the in that, yes. Uh, yes. In that. So if I was now to say that's put log amplitude on, you've changed the yeah. spread of the actual yes. display. So we have static test patterns as well as moving test patterns. This is a special test pattern we call test pattern A. Yes. <coughs> it can be used for audio, video delay measurement, so we can measure lip sync, but also we've got um, here, we can see that if I stop this sequence, I can skip through, so step through, yes. if you had a quad 3 gig yes. signal, you could see if yours, one of your links was a frame out, yes. because of the um, numbers here correspond to the quadrants, Yes. and then we have these numbers here, which actually for detecting two sample interleave errors. Yes. So if you had a delay here, that would show up, or yeah. a mismatch of the, mismatch. Yeah. Of the links, yes. that would show up in here. Yes. <coughs> Furthermore, we have frequency response. You can see the frequency response of yes. the signal. Yes. And you can see probably we're not getting much past 50 megahertz here. Yes. Yes. Um, that might be because the signals, uh, we've got the picture reduced in size, but if I go to full screen, <coughs> you can see, yes, you've got detail just up to about here, 50 megahertz, then yes. you lose it, so yes. 60 megahertz isn't really being seen. Yes, yes, I understand. And also you've got information about text resolution, and if I put it back into play mode, there's lots of motion there to see how equipment manages with motion and, uh, and so forth. Yes. So also I can load a static test pattern. This is a static test pattern I'm loading. This is a DPX file, so you can import DPX BMP files yes, and use yes. them as test patterns. Yes. It just has to load. It's decoding it. it takes a little while to load it because it's a 4K signal. Yes. And I can show you it's 4K because what I'm doing here, this is my output. I've got 12 gig, yeah. 1380. So I'm doing it across four quad links. Okay, so yes. now... Uh, my generator should be just loading, so here we go. It's loaded it, there's the test pattern. Yes. And we've upscaled it to 4K, so it's actually a 1920 by 1080, but it's been up Yes. And I can show you on here, so I've got my four three gigs coming in there. Yes. Oh no, to the light, I've got, it's a 12 gig, single 12 gig. Yeah, single 12 gig, yeah. yes. Going in. That's going through the analyzer, uh, user. user interface, the HDMI output. Yes. That's in that, that scale. <laughs> yes, that's right. So I will bring this back to the view. <coughs> um, so from the generator point of view, we've got lots of flexibility. We can generate audio as well. As you can see, I've got audio on my test pattern, which has been generated there.